Hey everybody, good afternoon. It's uh, it's about 2.05 here in uh, Queens, New York. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit today, have a discussion. One-sided discussion, but you could always talk back in the comments below. You know I almost always answer. Um, you know, unless it's sometimes it's just like a cool comp, like a compliment or a statement or something. Then it's kind of like just, you know, thumbs up, you know. But, <coughs> excuse me. What I was getting at is, um, I like the interaction between both of us. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up closer, get a little bit more light, and I'm going to close the window. Okay. And I like the window open. Whatever. Let's talk about uh, some crossover hats. Alrighty. Now, basically what it means, it's uh, it has elements of western hats and dress hats. Dress hats I call fedoras, or, you know, like the old time hats that they used to wear back in the 40s and stuff, with the, like I'm wearing right now, dress hat. Alright, dress hat for me is synonymous with fedora, or you know, classic hat I guess too. So, uh, crossover is essentially, it has some elements of both. Sometimes it's just made out of western felt. And, uh, like now there's a big trend with flat brims made of western felt. It has to be because it's got to be thick and very, very hard to keep up the flat brim. Otherwise it just sags, you know, the weight of it. So, they're thick, heavy western felt. But the styles, there's nothing western about them. You know, they're like closer to like, well, maybe some like Spanish bolero type westerns or something like that. You know, like Argentina, Argentinian hats and things like that. But um, they're not really western hats, they're just western felt. It's got an element of it. Um, it's made from western felt. Maybe it has, uh, I don't know, a western band on it. It doesn't have to though. Um, a uh, very popular crossover hat is uh, the Open Road. Everybody knows that. The LBJ hat and stuff. Um, if you look at the pictures in Texas and Dallas when um, Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald, was being carted away from the police and stuff, you see he's being surrounded by a whole bunch of guys wearing these. So it's kind of a little bit state trooper-ish. It's like half state trooper half cowboy, half much smaller than cowboy, so it's kind of like a fedora-sized western. Think of my green hat, like a two and three-eighth inch, or, you know, like a regular fedora, not a short brim, but, you know, it's got a western crown that's much lower. Like a regular western hat will have this shape, but it'll be way up there, very high. Open road is low. Sometimes it's too low for some people, and they make little bumps on the top and the sides, but that's part of its charm. You just got to make a little bump. I even have a video on how to deepen the crown and deepen the pinches if your head's too fat for it. Most people, they are. Unless you're buying like a really old vintage one, which are really soft, your head will probably just make those bubbles by itself. Uh, you might have to do it with a little bit of steam or something. Okay, the open road is definitely a crossover hat because it has a western felt, one element of western, a western crown, it's got a three finger or a cattleman crease, like a rancher, okay, but a low version, a little lower rancher crown. It's got a western band, a ribbon, like a kind of that string tie western straddleliner type band. Um, but it has a um, fedora type brim. The brim is a fedora. It's two and three eighths inch with a with a flange blocked exactly like a dress hat. It snaps up and down. It behaves a little bit differently because it's western grade felt. It's thicker, much thicker felt and a lot more stiffener and stuff. Um, but it's got the same flange as any, you know, you probably use the same mold as any other dress hat, you know, like, like what I'm wearing right now, something that snaps up and down. You can wear the open road snap down in front. You don't see it a lot in pictures. But you can, and you could wear it snapped down in the front and back. Uh, again, it's more unusual, but you can do it. You can do anything you want to. You could do trace it if you want. Um, a very common question is, can you open it up and teardrop it? Yes, you can teardrop it. You definitely can do it. Um, it's kind of a low teardrop. Um, it looks okay. I guess it mellows it out a little bit. It makes it look like the hat below it. See that crown there? It looks like that beige crown. But on that hat. So you could do it. I don't always like the way 
a teardrop looks when it's really hard and stiff and low like that. Yeah, I mean, that's just my opinion. I just like not changing it. But some of the older, softer ones take a really nice teardrop. I gotta say, the older ones are a little different. Um, so yeah, if you get one of those kind of nice vintagey ones, I think it'll t take a teardrop nicely. Um, a newer one, yes, it'll take a teardrop, but you know, I always feel like just don't do it. That's my thing. It's a controversial subject. I think it all comes down to taste. There's not a right or a wrong. It's a taste thing. Um, I've seen a few teardrop that looks okay. You know, they look pretty cool. Um, it looks very similar to this next hat I'm going to show you. And here's a crossover hat that's essentially just a dress hat, but all they did was put a western band on it. So instead of putting a, um, a ribbon band, you know, like a ribbon, grow grain ribbon sweatband, bait, not sweatband, grow grain ribbon outer band like this, is basically there because that's the part that is only touching your head, is right here. Listen to my head. Right there. Okay, go above there. There's no real hat, head there. It's space. Below it, just space. So my head is touching kind of like, you know, this area. They got it covered. So anywhere I could sweat, I'm making contact, it'll go into this ribbon. The ribbon gets sweaty or salty. You cut it off and change it. The felt never gets stained. If anything, it's stained underneath it, but it doesn't matter because you're going to change it again and cover it so no one will see underneath it. It's always raw anyway. There's stitches and, you know, raw stuff under there. So you want to keep the underneath the band part covered, you know. Um, yeah, so don't let the sweat get out of control. Once it gets past the ribbon, we can't really clean that, you know. So what you got to do is just uh, when this starts getting it, you might see it peeking through a, a cotton stitch, like a little circle. You see it's getting towards that those perimeters or maybe you're sweating here or something. Before the hat gets stained and rings a sweat on it, change that ribbon. Put a sweat wick inside. It's a little sweat pad we sell for five bucks. It's cotton. Those things work. Okay. So here's a guy. Um, you know, the Roadrunner is so the hat I was looking for. This is not it, though. This is a different hat. But basically, they're taking a regular fedora. They're putting a western band on it. So people see that as something different. You know, it's just like a regular whatever hat. You know, like a, the downs or the whippet. You know, a teardrop dress hat. But once you take off the ribbon and you put uh, a western band on it, no, it's not going to protect you from the sweat and stuff. But if you do sweat it up, you could always throw a ribbon band on there later for your second band, right? Or you could put a sweat wick on the inside and just, you know, hope that and the leather band is enough. Um, usually is. So I'm going to say, yeah, leather bands are possible. They're definitely better with Western hats because those are thicker. We tend not to sweat them up as quickly. But as soon as you start to see perspiration, you know, take, take advantage of all the things you got. You have a lining inside that could be changed. You have a sweat band inside that could be changed. You have the outer ribbon that could be changed. And you can put a sweat pad, what we call a sweat wick. It's a $5 cotton adhesive pad that goes between you and the hat. You could change those. Um, that's what I generally do. That way you keep all the original stuff on your stock, the band, everything inside the lining stays clean, but you got a sweat wick blocking it. Now, if you're bald and you sweat all the way around, you're going to need more than one sweat wick. You might need to cover it. That might tighten up your hat a little bit. So I generally say you can do this stuff towards, you know, later in the hat's life. Don't do it at the beginning because it'll tighten the hat right up. You're going to have to compensate for that and buy it a little bit loose, like, you know, one size big. Um, generally, if you wore the hat for a while, it's nice and stretched out. You could put a sweat wick or two in there, maybe one. I'm going to say two, you might need a stretch. But, um, you know, there are tricks. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut the sweat wick down a little bit to about six inches, put it in front here, and I'll do the same in the back because I find that most people don't touch the sides. There's this huge gap here. So wherever there's contact, I stop, I make a line, and then from there to there I make the sweat wick, it's like seven, you know, I give a little margin, a little extra, you know, like a quarter inch extra on each side, and I do the same in the back, because we don't need it on the sides, and you don't feel it either on the sides. Everybody's got this huge gap, not everybody, most people of European descent and stuff, I think people from Asia, um, 
their heads are more round. Um, I'm not sure about other ethnicities, but, um, you know, sort of European descent people have a little bit more of an ovalish type head. So there's always this gap on the side. Um, it's normal. Don't feel like you have to pat it down and get everything fitting perfectly. You don't. You just get the hat nice and snug, like a good snug pair of supportive shoes, and you let it stretch. And, well, not really stretch, just make the shape of your hat. I'm not saying by it tight, just by it nice and snug, you know, so it's locked on like a good pair of shoes that you can tighten up nice and tight, like that. Um, if it's not fitting like that, you tighten it up slightly and you get it just perfect. So it's tight enough to have some grip but not too tight where it's uncomfortable for you or giving you a headache. So that's where the sweat whip comes in handy. You put it underneath the leather back here, and you can use it just to size your hat. The bigger the sweat whip gets, the bigger the bigger, tighter it gets. The smaller you cut it, the smaller, smaller, the looser it gets. So you can really fine-tune your hat, get it right to the point where you want it. Not too loose, not too tight. It's perfect. And like I said, don't worry about the size. It's insignificant. I don't. Sometimes I do it when I'm selling a new hat, just a black sweat wick all the way around because, you know, a lady might buy like a $150 hat and we need the sweat wick to make the sale, you know, because it's too big. So I'll use, you know, two whole ones and it'll make the hat fit nicer for her and it'll look neat. But most of the time, nobody looks inside your hat and the sweat wicks are black. So you got a band like this, you just put a black pad here, a black pad there and nobody sees it. And who cares, you know? It's the inside. You just want the thing to be, you know. All right, I'm on a horrible tangent now. That was a long tangent. I'm in like Tangentville, like USA right now. All right, another way to go down the crossover rabbit hole is um, what they call the Outback. Let me see, I've got some Outbacks here somewhere. Here we go, there's a couple. That's not what I want to show you. No doubt. Can you drop one? Dune. Mm -hmm. I thought I had a Stetson Dune here or something. Well, an Outback essentially is kind of like a very, it's a Western hat that doesn't curl up on the sides like a lounger. It's generally downturned brim like this, okay? Like a Stetson Dune, a Stetson Cetera. Um, these are very wide brim outbacks. Um, outbacks have usually a teardrop most of the time because teardrop is very low and has a nice fit. It fits you like a tripod, kind of like here, here, here. So it's very stable. Where a center crease is kind of like you're balancing on that on this thing, it's kind of like when you center crease a hat, that juts into the hat and you're balancing on it. It's not as stable a shape, so the teardrop is a lot more, um, it's a good outdoorsy hat, you know, it stays on really well. It's good for riding, for the rain, for rugged use. A lot of times an Outback is just a fedora made from western felt with a slightly bigger brim to the downturn position. That's, that's all it is. Um, outbacks like that, when you start making the brim smaller, it's downturned, they classify it as a safari. So as it gets bigger, it's an outback. Shorter, it's basically, it's basically like a, a dress hat with a downturned brim. They call that a safari. Um, hmm, I thought I had a really good shot of some outbacks. Hold on. Where else? Mm, here's, here's some all sorts of outbacks here. Okay. Alright, that's a good outback shot. Those are outbacks. Outbacks like a Kubra, a Bushman, a Kubra Cattleman, Stetson Dunes, Stetson Cetera, um, all this stuff here. These are great. The Hard Rock. Nice, nice hat, the Hard Rock, it's a new one. The Hard Rock, the Dylan is a flat brim. So that's something new, that's a crossover hat, but I'm gonna say it's a modern crossover with a flat Bolero style brim. And uh, you know, a low teardrop, these are all new things, you know, like that, open crown, 
bolero flat brim. It's closer to something like a gaucho bolero or an Argentinian style, but it's a crossover hat. It's a little trendier right now, just an open crown hat. You could do whatever you want or leave it open. People were wearing them in the 60s, you know, guys like Dylan and Hendrix and other people, the Beatles and Let It Be wore some stuff like that. They sort of look like preacher's hats. Um, they're really cool, you know. Um, ladies have been wearing this shape forever. It's just now that it became unisex, it's considered, you know, groundbreaking, but it's not really. Uh, the ladies have been doing these flat hats, you know, forever and ever. And so have other people, you know. We have guys who come in, they want hats, um, like gaucho and bolero things. They're really into Argentinian folk music or Colombian, and, you know, and they love the music and the culture and the clothing and the horses and everything. And they have them custom made. Uh, we have this really cool guy named Danny. Uh, he speaks pretty much mostly Spanish, very little English. And he orders custom hats like this and we make them flat or sometimes open crown but dead flat brims and uh, really good ones. You know, he spends hundreds and hundreds of dollars on them, all custom. And he's really into that whole thing, um, you know, South American or Central American. The Tri-City is very similar. It's an oversized flat brim out back. It's great for ladies or guys. Uh, somebody asked me, is it's a good summer hat? I'd say in the evening or maybe, I don't know. Not really. I'm going to say... In New York, we won't wear this in July, August, and September, maybe. But, you know, the rest of the year, the other nine months, we'll wear it. So, it's more of an all-year-round hat. But the dead of summer? Nah. I mean, you could take out the lining on the inside, the silk lining, temporarily. It'll make it a little cooler. But I would wear it in the evening, maybe. Um, or if you don't have anything else. Yeah, it'll keep the sun off you, but I think you'll kind of sweat. You know, if it's just blasting down sun like a... Let's say an outdoor concert or some sort of outdoor event for hours and hours. No way. You'll be sweaty. Um, but, you know, you're going to, let's say, a lawn party or something. Uh, yeah, you could do it for a couple hours, maybe. It's not going to be that comfortable compared to, like, a summer hat, which you'll be totally comfortable in. But um, you could get away with it, I would say. It might not look right, though. So I would say wearing felt in the summer with shorts and everything, it just looks like you don't have the right hat. To me, to me, you know, unless you're on stage or something and you're doing some kind of show thing. Some people just, you know, they don't like the look of straw on stage, so they just always do felt. But yeah, that's my feelings on that. Outback crossover hats are probably the biggest category. They, they get very, very Western like this, which is essentially just an outback with a very Western band. People consider that a cowboy hat, but a lot of cowboys will be like, nah, that's not a western, you know, I need a, a rancher or this or that, something really big that kind of you know, curls up on the sides and stuff with a high crown. That's a diamond gem. Um, below that is a Pawnee. These are huge, huge hats. You know, very popular classic Stetson models, but they're smaller hats. Um, shorter guys looks great on just people that aren't built real big or tall. Ladies, it's fantastic. It's a regular western hat, but it's a teardrop shape. It's not a cattleman crease, so it's a lower crown. But essentially what you got there is an outback hat made of western felt with a western cowboy band, not an Australia-style band, an Australian, or a safari, or, you know, a rugged safari theme. It's a western theme, but it's an outback. There's the ones I was looking for, the dune and the satira. There's a classic western outbacks. I'm going to say that's an Outback, more designed to look kind of like, a, I don't know, like an Akubra. It's got a rugged sort of safari package. This is a cleaner Western package. The Stetson Dune, it's one of the most successful heavyweight, you know, felt hats ever. It's really well made. It comes in light brown, black, silver belly, all like an off-white. Um, these hats here have more western trim, so they're doing the same kind of thing with a western package, like concho, silver concho bands, you know. So it looks more western. You have black leather bands here in the pony with, uh, you know, little studs and stuff and little fringes and whatnot. Yeah. So it looks way more western. Uh, the pony is the official head of Tibet. Um, it's good to see that it's coming back. Uh, all the Tibetan people and Nepal, Nepalese uh, Sherpas, the Everest guys and stuff, they all love the Pawnee, but they like the Dune too. 
but they don't like it in black. Mostly acorn. Just a bit of trivia. They do shop at uh, JJ's. It's pretty cool. Some crossover hats. Um, safari is another type of a category. It's like when you take a downturned uh, hat that's either dress felt or western felt and you make the brim shorter, it's a safari. They also have hats that are just like uh, dress hats, like fedoras, that where the brim is locked to the down position. Um, that's a safari or a downturn brim. It's a kind of a spin-off of a, you know, related hat, but it's a smaller brim than like a dune or a satara or, you know, an akubra kind of thing. It's a little smaller. That's your safaris. Um, yeah, that's a typical kind of a weekender safari look. I think Stetson had a hat called the weekender with a little leather feather band that was very popular. So those downturn safari things, I always call them weekenders. That's the weekend look to me. Right, you can see this hat right here is done with an Australian Akubra type of a band. That's a typical like Australian style outback. As opposed to like a, a Western outback, which would be more like the Diamond Jim and the Pawnee. Uh, the guys down here at the bottom. Now, you can get a lot of these hats a little cheaper, uh, crushable. The Bozeman, these hats here are all crush crushable hats. They're very, very similar. They make about 10, 20 hats that are almost all the same shape. Some of them are just different colors or different bands, or they have uh, ear flaps inside, or, you know, like a Western package or an Australian package. They're very, very similar, but there's like a half a dozen to a dozen of them. They're called uh, crushable light felt outbacks, and it's a huge kind of thing. They're only about like $125 or so. Some of the fancier ones, $150, as opposed to like a Stetson Rancher, which is like $275, or a Stetson Dune, which is $230. Not to mention all these prices are 20% off right now during the COVID uh, tragedy. You have to, I think, put a special code in. Um, just code with the word support local, I believe. You can go to our uh, website or our Facebook site. You'll find that out. Or info at JJ Hat Center. So here's an example of an outback with a center crease. Okay, it doesn't have to have a, um, a teardrop either. So a center crease kind of gives it a real Aussie style. They do something like to bring the front down a little lower, the back higher, like a kind of a mini Tom Mix or Gus look. But uh, it probably makes it look less like a dress hat and gives it more of an Aussie look. To me, that looks like an Aussie-shaped crown. But you don't see lots of, uh, you know, Westerns or Aussie kind of things with center creases. I think it's really cool. It's unusual. It's a little higher sometimes, a center crease, where teardrop is a little more compact and low. But it sometimes fits people more efficiently. They both work for crushable hats too. These range more, like I said, a little over 100, 110, 125 bucks and stuff. Um, they roll up, they're wool felt, not, not uh, fur felt, and they're a lot lighter, a lot softer, and you could put them in your pocket, your pocketbook, your coat pocket, your jacket. You really can. I mean, it just rolls into a little cone. It's about the size of a, I don't know, like a, a Corona bottle or something when you roll it up, you know, like a regular sort of tall bottle of beer or something. So, um, it's a good thing. Crushable hats. Uh, they're not, quote, as authentic as some fur felt Stetsons and stuff, but they're amazing. They even make a crushable light felt version of the Gus, which is like, you know, kind of like that 10 gallon hat look with the tall back. It's awesome. It's amazing. You could take this thing, stick it in your pocket. It's a huge kind of, you know, big 10 gallon crushable hat. It's neat. Like, if you're going to get a crushable hat for the rain or sun or the snow, you might as well get one that looks cool. You know, get a Gus. What else have we got here? There's tons and tons of them. Lots of crushers. Um, the Linwood is one we have. The Lonesome Trail. These two here. The Linwood has that black, uh, that feather band on the leather. It's like leather with feathers, like pheasant on top of the leather. Same band that was on the Weekender years ago. This one is an oversized brim with a high crown. 
But again, still light felt crushable hats, still inexpensive, still American made uh, Stetsons. Um, there's a couple back here. This one, the Santa Fe, has a chin strap and an interesting little contro band, but they're all pretty much the same hat underneath. You know what I mean? Same price, same quality, same brim, same crown. Sometimes there's slight, slight differences in the crown or something like that or the brim, but it's so slight. They're essentially all the same thing. There's one of them, um, we call it the Stowe, S-T-O-W, S-T-O-W-E, like stowaway. The S-T-O-W, yeah, there's an E at the end. Anyway, uh, the Stowe is on the JJ Hat Center website, and um, it's basically one of these rollable outback things with ear flaps inside. So instead of wearing a ski hat or, you know, like a beanie or a sweatshirt hood or a parka hood, you could actually wear like a brimmed hat because it's got ear flaps to cover your ears in that frosty, you know, sub-zero weather or whatever. It's pretty cool. They work too. And you could stick it in your wife's pocketbook when you get to a restaurant, which I love doing. All right. Anyway, that's about it. Uh, what should we do here? I'll play you guys out a bit. What's his name? The guy's going insane. He's got stuff and loves all kinds of stuff. What's his name? Hey, Kevin from JJ Hat Center. Laying down a couple of facts. Take care.